Hey guys, what's up? My name is Michael, and here are three tips on how to comp vocals faster in Ableton Live. So right now, I'm actually working on a client mix for this Jersey Club and rap track. I'm gonna play right now so you can check it out. Back then, they try to tell me I'm crazy. These days, they see me shine, but they still acting shady. New girl, and she foreign. She chose me because I'm chosen. By the time this thing is over, I'm Jersey legend like Lauren. So right now, we're actually working on comping the doubles and the harmonies into the lead vocal. So what that means is basically taking these takes and retiming them to make sure that they are aligned completely with that lead vocal so that when the lines actually come in they're coming in on time and they're not sounding like they're recorded half second too early or half second too slow what we really want to focus with this is just making sure that we're aligning them as best we possibly can what i basically have set on my key binds is i have the control one or control i guess tilde to adding a fade so rather than having to click and do whatever the fade combination i, th I think it's like command option f which is like a weird really lift up your entire hand i just have to press command control and i'm good to go and i can add a fade quicker control one which actually deletes and so rather than having to go here and move my hand to the delete key i can just scroll and use my left hand for basically adding fades and moving around so my right hand can only just track and move around the mouse pad making it a lot easier i used to do vocals painfully by having to reconfigure my hand and, and move way more than that was really helpful. And this is a lot faster and uh, allows me to really focus on what I'm actually doing and hopefully get the job done a lot quicker. So what I'm basically doing right now is nudging the vocal um, slightly to make sure that the timing is correct with the lead vocal. If we pull up the right double right here, you can see this sibilance, Jersey this, this j, the J sound is coming in a little bit too early on this double. So what we're going to do is basically take this nudge it back so that the start of this phrase is here. And then we're just gonna take the S sound and nudge it, retime it so it's a little bit closer. So now instead of it being off like it was before, if we play it back I'm Jersey legend like in context with the lead, I'm Jersey legend like we can nudge it back and have it um, in a better spot that's gonna be more aligned and sound a lot cleaner. So I typically don't use fading in Ableton when I'm comping vocals because unless it is a go elongated phrase that really needs to be lined up, you can get pretty close as long as the vocalist is on time and on key for his layers. It's a lot faster to just chop the audio than having to double click, go in, add a fade and add a warp. It just makes it a little bit easier and faster. One other thing I really recommend too when you are comping vocals is to make sure that instead of moving the entire waveform when you are making cuts, make a small cut. So rather than having and working with this whole section right here and moving this whole thing around while I'm editing it, I'm going to make a small cut at the end and it allows me to just figure and realign this one four bar line or, or one bar line, which makes the timing a lot easier. So if I do notice that the vocalist is a bit off and, and the timing is either wrong for a couple examples, either they're recording with an MP3, so the whole file is going to be slightly ahead or slightly behind, then I would basically take the entire file and move it uh, slightly to the left or slightly to the right, just so I can speed up the time a little bit faster and uh, make my life a little bit easier. So you can see right here, we're doing the exact same thing. We're going to cut this edge right here, zoom in uh, using the plus key. And now we're going to slightly um, highlight the section, nudge it back, add a fade. So it's clip edges are nice and smooth. Do the exact same thing right here. And that's pretty much the process that I do for, for comping vocals. I tend to not listen to the doubles and the harmonies when I'm doing this, because at this point, I'm just trying to go on autopilot and I'm really just focusing on the timing. So what I'll usually do is just put up a video on my left monitor and watch YouTube while I'm actually comping these vocals because I'd rather listen to once at the very ends and compare like, okay, like this section I need to double check or this section I need to double check rather than really playing and, and forcing myself to listen to the exact same two or three bars the entire time. A lot of this is just timing. You know, these are just additional layers that aren't really going to be heard in the full context of the track. So with that in mind, the main thing is just like, are they getting in the way I and mean, are they timed properly and are they tuned? That's really all that really matters for hip hop, especially the tuning doesn't really matter too much because this is more of like a rapping type song where the vocals don't really have a pitch and a key that they need to follow. It's really focused on like, okay, are the lines getting emphasized in the right way? Is the timing feeling good? With doubles and harmonies, I highly recommend you do two at the exact same time. So right now we're doing both the left and right doubles to just make sure that the timing is good. You can see right here, he actually didn't do a full take of the right harmony for this one line, but it's going to be okay. I think I do have other takes right here that it's um, that I can pull from. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, bring it into here. And now we have our own double line we can use uh, to just add that extra bit of stereo width uh, when we are working on a track like that. So you just want to make sure if you can, especially when you are comping vocals, that you have enough takes from your vocalist. It's really, really hard if you don't, because there are ways to make it sound pretty real and pretty organic, but then you do run the risk of having some phase issues, especially if you do a little bit of retiming and re-pitching to make it sound a little bit different than that lead vocal. This is the fastest way I've learned to, to retiming and re-comping vocals. And in general, I really recommend you do focus and retime the lead first. So you can see right here, the lead vocal, 
all the effects, all the automation has been drawn in. You can see all these small cuts I've been making, making for the timing of it. And that's all been done beforehand. So rather than having to retime everything at once, I treat it as like a template. So I, I use the lead vocal as a template. And then from there, I comp all the doubles and harmonies to that. So now they're all in locked in and key because there's less I need to really worry about. You know, as long as the lead vocal is feeling good, I can trust that the doubles are going to feel at least okay because they're going to be in time. If there are any things I need to double check and fix, I have to go back in and double check those. But one thing I did forget to is that for doubles and harmonies, harmonies, uh, you do not need breaths. So you can see right here, there's some doubles that have some breaths built into them. Try to tell me you don't need that. There's no point in having that, right? If we just delete them and we play it in context with the rest of the uh, lead vocal. Back then they try to tell me I'm crazy. Let's just crank them for a second and turn up uh, all the breaths. So this is with everything on. This is with the breath still in there. Back then they try to tell me I'm crazy. It's a little weird when they come in, you know, it, you, the listener might not notice them, but you have to ask, like, is it important that they're in there? And let's just play it one more time without any of those breaths from the doubles. Back then they try to tell me I'm crazy. See, it sounds a little bit more like the line is actually being emphasized. There's a little bit less of like, what, what was that random sound coming in for the line that isn't the lead that still sounds like the rapper? It's really important to clean up all that information, especially with sibilance and especially with any sort of weird noises that's on the vocal. All that stuff, especially for doubles, you can be pretty strict and pretty crazy on how much you're actually deleting because a lot of that isn't going to be heard. And uh, you just want to make sure that the double is being treated as more of a ear candy texture thing rather than being something that's going to get annoying for the listener. So cutting more aggressively is a great way to make sure that you're carving space and to get the timing uh, completely out. So thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoyed. And you can check out all the other vocal tutorials I have on my YouTube page right here and uh, have a good one.